Hi, everyone. Thank you for um, attending our presentation. Um, so for our project, uh, we'll be focusing in on the question, where can heat pumps meet heating needs in Alaska's cold climate? Um, and I'm Catherine, and I'll be presenting with my teammates, Silas, Amina, and Brian. Um, so decarbonization is a pressing global issue, and the Arctic is an area of particular concern. So in Alaska, um, warming is occurring at four times the global rate, and thermal energy, which is primarily fossil fuel based, represents about 75% of energy consumption in the Arctic. So transitioning to cleaner and more energy efficient heating methods offers an immense opportunity to reduce carbon emissions and help combat climate change. Um, and heat pumps offer this energy efficient solution. So in contrast to traditional heating sources that often require burning fossil fuels to generate heat, um, air source heat pumps extract heat from the environment. So even in colder temperatures, they're able to extract heat from the air outside and push it indoors to heat a home or a building, essentially working like an air conditioner in reverse. Um, and this means that they produce um, more heat than the electricity that they use, making them about two to five times more energy efficient than traditional electric resistance heating. Um, and if the electricity used by a heat pump comes from renewable resources like um, wind or solar, then the operation can be nearly carbon free. Um, but despite heat pumps offering this great energy efficient solution, um, Alaska is slow to transition to getting their heating needs met by heat pumps. So in Alaska, only about 1% of households um, are estimated to have a heat pump compared to the national average of around 15%. So why does Alaska have such low adoption rates? Um, one primary factor is a concern that heat pumps won't be able to heat um, to, to meet the heating needs in the cold Alaskan climate. So because heat pumps transfer heat instead of generating it, they become less efficient at extremely low temperatures um, when there isn't enough heat in the outside air to extract. And this is a very real concern um, as some parts of Alaska can have nights as cold as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Um, and just a note here, because the efficiency, oh, sorry about that. Um, because the efficiency of a heat pump directly relates to its heating feasibility um, for the purposes of this presentation, we'll use those terms interchangeably. Um, and another concern in switching to heat pumps is uncertainty about how cost effective this would be at the household level. So in other words, is the money that could be saved in efficiency um, worth the um, initial costs of installing and maintaining a heat pump? Um, and this brings us to the primary question that we hope to address in our project. Um, where can heat pumps meet heating needs in Alaska's cold climate? So current work regarding heat pumps in Alaska focuses on the impact of a heat pump in a single home or heat pumps tested under lab conditions. We build on this work to create community level analyses that look at the impact of heat pumps within a region. Transitioning to greener heating is a complex problem that needs to be addressed at an individual level by homeowners and at a community or regional level by policymakers, local organizations, and housing authorities. Our work aims to help groups making large-scale policy decisions answer where in Alaska heat pumps will work and where they should target their resources. Um, our goal for this project is to create map-based visualizations that explore both heat pump adoption and potential in Alaska. We create and visualize what-if scenarios for heat pump adoption. Uh, we also run simulations to estimate the economic, technical, and green impacts of installing heat pumps. So that one goal sounds very nice and succinct, but I'd like to tease out two parallel workflows that we created. The first looks at statewide adoption and makes unchanging assumptions about the world that we live in today. For adoption, we're interested in knowing where heat pumps are now, where they will likely be in the future, and we want to quantify an opportunity gap between the two. The second hidden goal is borough potential. This goal comes with changing and interacting assumptions. We investigate heat pump potential given different fossil fuel price changing scenarios, government subsidies, and varying levels of climate change. So to start, we discussed with energy and utility experts in Alaska what the current landscape of heat pump adoption looks like. 
there was no one source that we could go to to get this information. So we compiled a new data set based on these expert opinions. The numbers that we arrived at aren't perfect, but um, because many heat pump installers and homeowners don't get permits and there isn't a house to house inventory of heat pumps. So we end up pulling from permits, installer records, and knowledge of general trends and demand curated by organizations like Alaska Heat Smart and the Chugach Electric Association. And we come up with our estimate of about 1% of homes have heat pumps in Alaska today. So from that 1% estimate, we chose 5% and 15% as goal numbers for our adoption scenarios. Uh, representatives at the Alaska Housing Finance Corporation agree that 5% adoption in the next 10 years is within the realm of possibility, whereas that 15% number, the U.S. national average of heat pump adoption, is more aspirational. With these goals in mind, we went about distributing heat pumps by borough using a proportional allocation algorithm. This algorithm was developed and is typically used to distribute parliamentary seats according to votes. But in our case, we distributed heat pumps according to average heat pump efficiency and population. We greatly weighted heat pump efficiency over population because we believe this is the most important factor in determining heat pump adoption. After all, if a heat pump can't heat your home, why get one? Our adoption scenarios are not meant to be predictions. Um, instead, they're an imagining exercise for what heat pump adoption could look like, allowing us to explore that opportunity gap I mentioned earlier, the gap between what currently exists and what is possible. Okay, so in addition to the statewide adoption, we consider how heat pump impact changes given different economic and climate conditions. We allow for changes in fuel price, government rebates, and temperature. So these changes can be seen on their own and in combination with one another. So we believe these changes represent some of the most important and most likely changes that would occur. Uh, we believe uh, fuel prices, especially natural gas, are expected to increase beyond typical inflation. New rebates as part of the Inflation Reduction Act will go into effect this year. And like we mentioned, the Arctic is facing global warming at a much higher rate than the rest of the world. So you want to know the impacts of using heat pumps if, this uh, if these changes occur. So to get a measure of our estimate, that is uh, feasibility in terms of eating days covered, economic savings, and the amount of carbon saved, we relied mainly on the heat pump calculator. So the heat pump calculator uh, was designed by Alan Mitchell from Anal Analysis Note. So it is a great tool for measuring all these estimates for buildings. So the heat pump calculator takes in climate data as input. And our way of, of optimizing this tool is that we incorporated the use of a more granular data from the Google Earth engine. So the heat pump allows users to like directly change assumptions from some variables, including uh, fuel type, fuel prices, and government subsidies. So we take advantage of this when running our different simulations. And we also adjusted the underlying data uh, by adjusting our temperature data. So we calculated the differences in average temperatures from 1980 to 2009 and 2010 to 23, and used simple extrapolation to adjust the temperature data used by the calculator in some of our simulations. So like we mentioned, the heat pump calculator is a great tool, but it only gives estimates for a building at a time. So if you want like a bro level estimate, you probably want to use our tool. I mean, you definitely want to use our tool. <laughs> so this slide here is just to show you a workflow, uh, the workflow we followed. So we, uh, we make some assumptions and simulations from the calculator. We get the estimates for a particular building. And then we weigh each city by the number of households in, uh, in the city and the type of flow those homes use. And this uh, all meeting for data is gotten from the US Census and American Community Survey, and then we aggregate over a borough, so we get our borough estimates. So after a series of engagement with our stakeholders, we decided the diagram is the best kind of visualization we can use for our estimates. 
So in an argument of when people over land or land over people, uh, the Thai gang is a good solution to this. Uh, so the area of each region, such as the borough, is not drawn to scale, rather it is resized by population. So the aim is to represent data on a per region basis, but in a way that reflects the value of the data rather than the, rather than the geographical uh, size of that region. So we know Alaska is geographically wide, it's very big, but it has a very low population density. So to the right here is a diagram of the US 2014 uh, US 2004 election. Uh, this is just to show you that it's not something we came up with, it has always been out there. Uh -huh. And then the thing is that this type of visualization aids in providing meaningful insight in a situation where the land size is not proportional to the number of people on the land. So after all, people are just eat pump, not land. So next you're going to have a demo of our visualization tool. Now we are very excited to show you our interactive tool that is online, open source, and publicly available right now. Let me do a quick demo about how our users can engage with our interactive tool. And I have to reload this because it's been sitting for a while. This is an interactive tool that we have built uh, upon our Shiny and Plotly to make it interactive and publicly uh, open source. And it's still loading right now. <laughs> Perfect. So here in the introduction page, we give the, uh, the users a motivation about why do we care about Hippom, uh, suggest how they can navigate with our dashboard, and also orient them uh, to uh, one of our main visualization tool, that is the Tiogram. So here on the left-hand side, you see Alaska being represented in a traditional map. For example, you can see Anchorage, one of the uh, uh, bigger cities that has the largest population, is being buried by other big borough that simply has larger geographical size. But it doesn't do justice to the fact that he has one of the most, uh, you know, uh, largest population in Alaska. On the right-hand side, you have a telegram that represents Alaska in a different way. We create that from the Alaska Department of Labor and Workforce research, uh, uh, development research. And uh, we also make the underlying grid data available. So if you are a researcher in Alaska, feel free to download them and use them. So you see that we do a better, to, uh, better job in terms of doing justice to the fact that Anchorage has much more population than other you know, geographically larger region. So this telegram is gonna show up in our uh, visualization recurrently. So let's look at adoption rate at a statewide level, our first goal. We know that Alaska heat pump adoption rate are very low right now, around uh, sitting around 1%. What if the scenario changed to 5%? So we can actually toggle between different uh, projection scenario. You can say 5%. You didn't see much change, but you can actually hover over individual borrow and get the individual borrow data. For example, you can see Anchorage here have 200 uh, heat pump being installed. It sounds small. Uh, let's be a little bit more ambitious and hit the national average of 15%. Now you see a whole different scenario where heat pump being much more widely available in Alaska. You can also toggle between relative versus absolute uh, number. Now you can see that we actually in the panhandle region, imagine a pan, this is the handle. This is uh, usually what people refer Southeast Alaska to, uh, including important cities such as Juneau. They are, the heat pump there are much more uh, highly concentrated in those regions. And I think it does a great job of uh, telling that, you know, our algorithm reflects certain reality because the Southeast region has been one of the pioneer in adopting hip pump. And they are also likely gonna be the leader in leading this uh, hip pump adoption effort. So I think we are pretty happy about the result of the algorithm, but also we can imagine, right? In the 15% uh, scenario, which uh, borough are you sitting at and what will the scenario, scenario look like? And how do we uh, imagine our user will use this information? There are two things. So the first thing is that we hope this information is gonna help local NGO and housing authority uh, in different boroughs to anticipate future demand because they are planning their annual subsidization program. They are planning their educational program yearly. If they are empowered with this tool, they can ant actually anticipate demand and advocate for better resources allocated to their region and also educate their local homeowner or constituency about potential future demand. And also there are a lot of player involved in making hip hop adoption possible. Uh, installer, uh, distributor, uh, technician that are involved in the ecosystem, they actually also want to know the information. We know from interviews that uh, one of the bottleneck is actually logistic. 
uh, to get an installer, a hip pump installer in your region, you might have to wait for four months. So I think anticipating that future demand is very important because it allows other users to coordinate and to kind of uh, preempt, uh, you know, uh, other uh, future demand and uh, in regions that you know the demand might be high. So we also show that uh, in total aggregate. Uh, we can see 97% of the heating date will be covered by heat pump according to our simulation. Uh, $169 million is going to be saved due to the superior efficiency of heat pump. And also 144 millions of pounds of CO2 are going to be saved if we uh, can achieve that aspirational goal. So let's look at the second functionality, which is heat pump potential, uh, 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 especially at a borrow level. Uh, and the telegram, it shows that uh, the net present value, which is defined as the economic efficiency of adopting a heat pump over its lifespan, minus the installation cost and electricity cost, uh, where the blue region show that it makes economic sense, and the red region uh, reflect that it might not make economic sense. But that is highly dependent on the fact that a lot of uh, Anchorage, uh, uh, cities like Anchorage are relying on very cheap fuel uh, source, such as natural gas, that is currently very cheap. And that scenario might change, uh, given what we have discussed. Fuel price, especially fossil fuel. If you're living in Seattle, gas is rising at a, a daily level. It hit five dollar yesterday, and I'm pretty mad about it. But the idea is that what if fuel price continue to increase? What if fossil price? What if another Ukraine war hit and suddenly there is a spike in uh, natural gas or oil? So you can actually toggle between different scenario, and you can actually see some of the region turn from red to blue. It show that there is actually potential for heat pump adoption, not right now, but in future. And also you can uh, toggle between different subsidy pro, uh, projection. Let's say we are in the induction, ref, uh, induction ref, uh, inflation reduction app right now, which is 2000 test credit. Again, government subsidy plays a large role. And I think this tells a story and empower the local NGO to advocate in, uh, in front of federal agency or the local government that subsidy program help in their region. And there are a lot more cool features that I can talk about in this uh, website, but we don't have time. So I encourage you to check it out and also play around with uh, the tool uh, yourselves uh, after this presentation. And let me go back to the uh, presentation and take stock of what we have learned from our tool. So the main takeaway is this, right? So for 18 out of 30 borrow, 97% or more total heating day can actually be covered by heat pump. So hopefully we can address some of the skepticism and concern uh, from local residents that heat pump might not work in cold climate like in, in Alaska. And also we have shown that the Inflation Reduction Act works and makes heat pump economic in more than five borrow compared to uh, a, a scenario if there is no uh, any government rebate. And also if we, uh, if Alaska can reach the national average of 15%, there will be 140 million pounds of CO2 being saved. That helps the environmental and global warming. So this is, I think this tool show that there's tremendous potential of heat pump adoption in Alaska. Um, and there were, there were three aspects of our tool um, that were really important to us as we were designing it. Um, so first, we really wanted it to be interactive. It was important to us to allow users um, to actively engage with the um, with the tool to see how different scenarios would change the map, allow them to hover over features they might be interested in. Um, second, it was important to us, our tool was accessible to a wide range of audiences. Um, so we did design it with a primary audience of uh, policymakers and NGOs in mind, but really we hope that it will be accessible to both technical and non-technical audiences. Um, and to achieve this, we did a few things like ensuring that our visualizations both conveyed the relevant information like population rather than space while remaining clear and easily interpretable um, and presenting information in multiple formats um, like in maps and numbers and bar charts. Um, and Third, it was important to us that both our tool and our workflow and code was freely and easily um, accessible online. Um, and rather than seeing this tool and project as a static and, and finished product, we do see our project as a, as a blueprint. And this flow chart summarizes our, our process for both our statewide adoption goal along the top and our borough potential goal along the bottom. Um, importantly, our stakeholders were really central in all of the stages of our, of our project, from shaping our goals to offering key technical resources um, to offering expert feedback about our, our, our visualizations. And so they're getting a, a central spot in this workflow. Um, and with this blueprint, we want to outline the areas of expansion. Um, so currently in progress is we are increasing the granularity of our climate data. Um, our group worked to produce more granular climate data 
for Alaska than what was being used previously. So using um, Google Earth Engine, we were able to obtain daily temperature data averaged across a 10 year time span for 12,000 census blocks or small distinct uh, census regions in Alaska. And we're currently in the process of incorporating this highly granular data into the heat pump calculator, which currently uses data from about 70 climate um, regions. Um, we also piloted an approach for obtaining hourly data at the block level. Um, this uh, increased precision and climate data will help as we expand our estimates to smaller community um, levels. Um, and in the future, um, periodic updates to the climate data and heat pump estimates um, estimates will be needed um, to ensure that as people adopt more heat pumps, these, these numbers are updated. Um, and finally, um, our framework offers the opportunity for functionality um, updates to our adoption scenarios and the heat pump calculator. Um, and these updates will become more apparent as more people use the tool and have a better understanding of what kinds of information they need to explore different scenarios and make these informed decisions. Um, so we really want this work to be expanded on by, by stakeholders, um, and we hope that people interested in contributing to the project will reach out to us. Um, so we invite everybody to explore the app. It's um, online and available. You can feel free to scan the QR code or go to this link um, to check it out. Right now, we do recommend people view it on a computer to get the full functionality of the interactive maps. Um, so we really want to thank um, people who contributed to this project, especially Aaron and Maddie, our project lead and, and data scientist, everybody um, at the eScience Institute, the other fellows for their input and support, um, and all of our amazing stakeholders. Um, and we're happy to take any questions.